So, as many of you know, I've been working at Buffalo Wild Wings as a server for about maybe two months now. Um, and, uh, yeah, about two months, I'd say. And that means I am a professional. No, that doesn't mean I'm a professional at all. In fact, there's a lot that I'm still learning. Um, and so, some might even say this video is a little bit premature. But... Um, I don't think that it will be in the way that I'm tailoring it because since I'm such a psychoanalytical person, then I always post process um, the things that I'm doing and the things that even other people are doing. Um, and so this is actually just going to be an accumulation of a lot of the things that I've observed during the job. And just I want to big put a big disclaimer here, especially if any of my managers are watching. Um, just because I mentioned something here does not mean that I have now mastered it or that I've even probably started doing it. Um, I'd like to think that maybe within the past two or three days at least <laughs> that I've actually started doing everything on this list. Um, that maybe at least one or two I've pretty much like gotten down pat. And of course there's a lot more, but this is just my experience. Um, and this is a list that I've compiled like actually during my shifts like as soon as you know something would happen or I'd observe something within myself or someone else then I'm like oh let me go ahead and just like write this down um, and next thing you know it's like hey you know if I'm writing down these tips for myself uh, why not make tips for those who are actually interested in watching it on YouTube so this will be 10 Great tips on how to be a great server. Number one, set the tone and read the table. This is really important because as soon as you walk up to the table, then usually you should know what kind of way you're gonna be interacting with these specific people. There are the people who, when you go up to them and you say hello, then they don't respond, and then you continue to say like, hey, my name is Denzel, I'll be your server for today and they still don't respond, they're just staring at their menus or even like on their phones or whatever, they just feel like they're like, yeah, 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 just hurry up and ask us what we want to drink. Uh, and there's people who, as soon as you walk over to the table, then you say hello, and before you even get to the rest of it, like my name is Denzel, they're like, hello! So then you know, okay, this is the kind of energy that I should probably put back. You should know if they're, you know, people who are very chill or if they're people like who are in a rush. You know, there's sometimes like I'll have people and then as I'm talking to them, like, hello, my name is Denzel, can I get you something to drink? It's like, yeah, and by the way, like we're kind of in a rush and so do you mind if we put in our orders right now? It's like, oh, okay. Now this of course doesn't mean to have all of your other tables be sacrificed, but I guess this does mean to prioritize this table and try to get that table out of the way so that you can give better service to the other tables who are still there. Um, so that's just one big thing that you should know right away, to read the table and interact with that table the way that they'd probably like for you to interact with them. Number two, get things out of the way. So I, I see servers who do both. They'll leave everything on the table up until the people at the table leave and have signed the receipts and everything, you know, leaving the tip and all of that. And then they'll go off and clean that table or the term that we use is bust the table. I actually don't know if it's bust, B-U-S or B-U-S-T. Somebody should help me out with that. <laughs> but nobody ever notices when I say it. Anyway, so there's those people and there's people like me now, because uh, this is what I've started doing and I found it to be very helpful since I'm not really into cleaning up the whole table with everything that was on it by the end, like after they leave, because I have so much other things to do. So um, I like to get things out of the way while I'm serving the table. So a lot of tables may ask for refills or they may ask for something else or when they have the appetizers and everything. So when I come there, I'm trying to do like a win-win situation here where I'm looking for things all the time to get out of their way. If they want a refill and I used another cup this time, then I'm gonna take their old cup out of the way. Um, if they have, you know, like some plates that are, you know, done with and everything, I'm gonna take those out of the way. Like, okay, well, while I'm on my way already over to the kitchen, let me drop this off so that later on, I don't have to make like five trips when I'm trying to get to another table. Occasionally you'll be cut, which is a, another server term for pretty much meaning that you're not gonna be getting any tables, but now you have to start your cut work. 
um, which means that you have a series of assignments that you have to do before you're allowed to actually be clocked out. So yeah, there's a gap between being cut and being clocked out. Another server term. But um, yeah, usually when you're cut, then you'll still have a table that was there that you were attending to before you were cut. And sometimes they people just like to chill. Um, they've already paid their bill and everything. And, you know, it's going to be kind of weird to just walk over there and be like, hey, 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 so I'm, you know, cut right now and I really need to close out all of my tables and all of that. Uh, so do you mind if I take my tip just so I could plug that in right now? You know, sometimes that's just weird. Like, I personally wait until the people have completely left before I even show them that, like, or before I even, like, show that let them think that I've thought about my tip in any way but there's a trick that you can do um, when people still want to chill but you're trying to get out of there um, it's just pretty much still getting things out of the way you head over to the table and as they're you know sitting there nobody likes to really sit and talk and chill with the dirty table so if they've already paid and now you're just waiting on the tip and the check and everything um, to, uh, then you can what you can do is you can go over there and be like, hey, you know, if things are still on the table, like, hey, you guys are free to chill for as long as you want. Let me just clear off this table for you so that you guys can, like, further relax. So then after that, you take a few of the trays, you take a few of the plates, all of that, and then swoop, grab the tip receipt, and you're pretty much good from there. That way, now they have a clear table to talk about everything, and then you're free to go and plug in whatever tip that they've given you. And then you can also continue your cut work and head home, even if they still decide to chill over there, instead of you being at the mercy of them chilling and then having to rush them out. Number three, read for jump rope sections. I see conversation as like double dutch in a way. You have to kind of time it and then jump into it. I had this idea um, toward the beginning of me serving of like, you know, getting like a bobblehead or like some sort of like flags like small flags for the people at my tables so that you know whenever they're having like a deep discussion or something I don't pop by every two or three minutes and derail the conversation like are you all still good you know so instead they would just put like a flag or maybe like a empty cup or a salt shaker I don't know something at the end of the table to indicate that hey we would like to be interrupted right now because we actually need something um, I was discouraged from doing this from one of my managers, and so I don't do it, but I've been managing pretty well, being able to read the table still, which is still very important. You have to read the table, and like so reading it even from a distance and not interrupting. Um, if you see that they're like in really deep conversation, then it's always good to like, you know, wait before you interrupt or time your interruptions very well, um, or if you even have to interrupt at all, you know, if they just see, if you see that their cups are empty, you don't even have to interrupt. You just take the cups and you, you, you come by with another refill, you know what I mean? And they can still continue to talk. You don't really have to ask them any questions. But yeah, the main thing behind this one is just to make sure that when you're interrupting them, it's for a good cause and that you've timed it well. Number four, joke. Once again, you have to read your table and don't be afraid to joke with them. I usually say like a lot of like corny jokes. It just depends on who the table is. And I don't really like be repeating jokes a lot of times because once again, it just depends on who the table is. But sometimes, you know, if I have like a table who orders all water, I'd be like, wow, you guys are just so healthy, you know, or if it's all salads or if there's only one person who ordered water and everybody else got soda, it's like, ah, you're the healthy one. If somebody got water with lemon, it's like, oh, you're the fancy one. You know, small things like that, I'm, I'm telling you, just tiny things. Like, that's a tiny joke. And it makes them, like, kind of, like, laugh and, like, have, like, conversation, you know, like, and next thing you know, they just kind of like you. Um, and it's not that you're actually trying to make them like you for the tip, at least not me. But, you know, once again, like I said in my previous video, tips are nice. I don't have anything against them. In fact, I love them. But what you really want to do is uh, show them that you're genuine and that you just want to give them a good experience. And a good experience often involves like, you know, kidding around a little bit and just having like a nice time with them and allowing them to be comfortable with you as their server. And another joke that I usually do <laughs> is um, when the table has been sitting there for a while and they like see me coming with their food, then usually I'm like, all right, and I make like a big scene I have a whole bunch of napkins on the uh, food and everything. I drop off the napkins and then I'm like, all right. And I kind of like walk away and they're like, oh, whoa, we could have sworn that was our food. 
And then, you know, it's only for like two seconds. I'm in, I'm just kidding. And then we all laugh about it, you know, and then I actually drop off the food. Once again, it's something very small, but these small things kind of like give like interactions, like just a little bit peppering. You know what I mean? A little bit of salt and pepper. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Number five, keep in mind that pops are temporary. This is a very, very big one um, that I had to learn. Um, so pop, a pop is pretty much uh, an occasion where there are several tables coming in at once and that you have to like manage at a time. And whenever there's a lot more tables, then that means that there's a lot more room to make mistakes. Um, there's a lot more room for people to get impatient about their food and stuff like that. And everybody starts getting very high strung and stressed. Um, and for me, I'm the type of person that you know, sure, I'm annoyed and I'm sad or whatever, whenever my table might have been like, you know, like waiting for food for forever or, you know, th things have gotten wrong. But I get more sad, annoyed, stressed or whatever when my teammates start to feel that way and they get very stressed and everything. But then one thing I've realized that's very important is that these things don't last long. You know, a pop will last for maybe like an hour max. And then right after that, for the rest of the night, things could be like really chill. So it's almost like rush hour in a way. And then everybody's pretty much forgotten about that pop. At least that's how it is at my job. You know, nobody's going to bring it up tomorrow or unless they're jerks, you know, but they're not going to be like, oh, you just sucked earlier today and everything. No, we just kind of like move past it. The people that were there that may have been giving you a hard time saying like, hey, Where's my food? I ordered three minutes ago, you know, stuff like that. Um, and not seeing you buzz around everywhere trying to aid to the other tables, um, they're all gone now. And they probably forgot about that experience now too, you know? Sure, maybe some of them might not come back, but hey, you win some, you lose some. Try to win as many as you can, but just remember that when you're in the moment, this moment is temporary. And you have much better moments coming up ahead. Number six repeat orders especially when you have like a bigger table then it gets very hard to like get all the orders down and everything you know we start writing like very sloppily on the uh, little notebook pad thing or whatever I know that I do because I'm just trying to like write them down as fast as I can and then next thing you know when you get back to your uh, kiosk station then you're like crap what did I write over here and now you have to go back to the table to ask them or you guess and then you're gonna end up getting something wrong but if you say something back to the table like all right so I got four mango habanero large traditional salad blah blah, blah. okay got you you know and like you kind of like repeat the orders like back to all of them like for you I have lemonade with uh, lemon I don't know whatever then they actually appreciate that and that also gives them the moment to be able to be like oh wait no actually can you scratch that i want this and then that saves you from getting a comp which is pretty much when you have to get uh something taken off and that goes into your record as a server number seven help your teammates for me this is just like basketball so at my job they always say that everybody's table is your table and that is true. So you want to do things, you know, such as like picking up, you know, a uh, uh, few cups or something whenever you're like walking past, even if it's not your table, um, getting refills for people if you have the time, if it's not your table. But also remember that your tables are your priority. Like if we're playing basketball, then you're trying to keep the other team from scoring, everybody on the other team from scoring. However, there is someone that you are specifically assigned to in basketball to guard. And everyone knows who's played or watched basketball that if your man scores maybe like once or twice, then everyone's going to be like, yo, whose man is that? So in the same sense, when you're serving, then people are going to watch and they're going to be like, yo, who has table 143? And if you're the person who has table 143, then it doesn't matter if you were guarding, you know, somebody else like, well, we had a pick and roll and I had to go and guard Pippen and blah, blah, blah. blah. You know what I mean? Or like, oh, I had to aid to Amber's table because, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, nobody really cares about that because in that moment, your table is the one that was left unmanned. So make sure that you got your tables down and if everybody has their tables down and they're able to also help out other tables because that's your team, that's gonna make for a very good team. Number eight, 
always ask if the check is separate or together. A lot of people can get offended. Thankfully, this hasn't happened to me yet, but this is something that I've heard about already. If you bring this check to them and you know they're actually separate, um, when you thought that they were a couple and they were paying together, a lot of them could get offended, you know? Um, also try to make sure that you don't just hand it to the man, you know, especially in our society today. Like try to put it like in the middle of the table, face down, and be like, hey, this is y'all, this is for y'all for whenever y'all are ready. Um, and it, but yeah, always ask like, okay, and this is separate, is this separate or together? Um, some families or whatever, they might, not necessarily get offended, but you know, they might be like, oh, why are you asking that question? Of course it's together. Some might be like, why are you asking this question? Of course it's separate. Do you see how big this party is? But a lot of times you just say, yeah, just making sure. And they usually understand like, oh yeah, you know, I guess it is likely that somebody else could have, like you, they could have brought some, uh, the check in a different way and then would have had to do it all over again. So yeah, just always make sure that you're asking if it's separate or together. Number nine, write in shorthand. You're pretty much going to be the only person that reads over your notebook. And so try to write fast so that you'll be able to be more efficient, but also have like shorthand like things there, you know, like I have BL for boneless, you know, and then I have F for fries because I already know what that is, CKN for chicken, stuff like that. Like even if other people won't really know what it means, as long as you know what it means, when you go back to your uh, to your server station and then you're plugging it into the kiosk and that's all that matters, try to make it like really fast and then when you have that short hand, then that way you're able to get through the other tables a lot quicker. Lastly, number 10, be genuine. As a server, what you really want to do, continue to do is to yes, be genuine with your uh, customers. Like I'm the type of person that once again, I just really want to make this clear, tips are good. That's actually the only way pretty much I'm getting paid. So I love tips, but I don't do things for the tips. You know, now there are people out there who do and hey, you know, like well, one of my coworkers, <laughs> he was like, if I wanted to just come and just make people happy, I would have worked that and I didn't hear this part. Um, he said, I'm here to make money. <laughs> and it's like, hey, you know, that makes sense. ESFP, you know, that's, you know, I see it personally as like an F-I-T-E kind of thing. Um, for those of you who uh, follow my channel and understand the type and everything. And for those of you who don't, then just ignore that part. All I'm trying to say is that there are people who do do things for that end goal of getting a really good tip and all of that. And hey, as long as you got good service, then why should you really care? But for me personally, I'm just really concerned with giving people a really good time, a really good experience, connecting with them. I like learning from them. You know, when I when I talk to the uh, these people, you get so many different people that you're serving, and when you start finding out what they really like and stuff like that, you can learn a lot from them. You know, especially at times when you don't have. Um, as big of a table and you're just genuinely like tossing back and forth. I've done this with a few tables and they've ended up still stiffing me, but I knew it wasn't because they disliked me. Maybe they just didn't have enough money to be able to tip me. Um, and that's fine. You know, it's not like I had that conversation with them so that I could get the money. But as long as you're showing them that you're genuine, I think that that's going to create a very good experience for them. And who knows what that will do for your pocket at the end of the day, but don't let it be your end goal. And just a little bonus because, you know, I had um, a few other tips that came to mind. Um, so I guess you could say number 11, meditate. Meditating before shifts has helped me so much with um, how I go about things, especially like before the pops. Um, I often just, you know, sit down even between serving tables and stuff like that. I will disappear. I don't know if any of my coworkers have realized this yet, but like I'll disappear outside in the back area where nobody goes and I'll just kind of like sit there and I'll just close my eyes and just relax, you know, take a few deep breaths or I'll put my head down, maybe even like just touch some people back on my phone real quick, you know, or like something just to like kind of like relax and like get back to my center. And then I'm able to go back and then I'm able to handle things a lot more clearly because meditation doesn't necessarily waste time. In fact, I found it to kind of like preserve time and help you make the most use of your time because it keeps you from having like a big anxiety attack. 
And so I'm actually planning on doing a video on meditation, different types of meditation that I've at least that at least have helped me. Um, for those of you who are interested, but yeah, meditating and just centering yourself before um, shifts and even like in between shifts and uh, in between serving tables and stuff like that, if you have the time, it could help a lot. And then just the last few things, um, like keeping your hands washed. Nobody wants a server whose hands are dirty, you know what I mean? Make sure that you stay hydrated, especially if you're like me and you're just zipping in and out like everywhere. You want to make sure that you're, uh, and you're talking to people too. So you want to make sure that, you know, your breath doesn't stink. You're staying hydrated and, you know, you're not going to just faint out of nowhere. Um, also make sure to ring in people's orders as soon as you can because the quicker that you can get their orders into that computer for the uh, kitchen to start working on it, the quicker they'll be able to start working on it and the quicker you'll be able to get it back out to the table and the quicker you can get that table out of the way so that you can tend to other tables. And the last thing, make sure that you're also trying to do your cut work um, even before you're cut. That way when you are cut, then you only have like just a few more cut work left to do. So it's kind of like getting things out of the way with the table in the same sense if you have moments where it's like, okay, I have some free time, let me roll some silverware, or let me go do some dishes, or let me sweep up a little bit, and that way when you're cut, then you've already done a lot of the work, and so now you don't have to stay for an extra two hours before you can get signed off and leave. And so yeah, that has been uh, 10 or 15, however many, uh, tips that I've learned from being a server and hopefully that'll help you and any servers people who are already out there who are already servers um, feel free to leave more tips and everything that'll help me out and other people who are watching this and for those of you who are just getting into server life I hope that this is a, a really big help um, and hope that you have fun you know it's a really great job once you get the hang of it and everything i'm still continuing to get the hang of it but yeah thanks for taking the time to watch this video and done